So um, our idea was to uh, use syntactic semantic information and syntactic information to uh, produce uh, different patterns for Bulgarian. Uh, and uh, to start with, um, okay, so uh, our main point was uh, to actually uh, map verbnet uh, classes and uh, semantic roles to frame net uh, frames and frame elements. Well, verbnet classes have already been um, mapped to semantic roles, uh, to frame net uh, uh, frames and uh, I'm not competent enough to uh, judge for any other so we uh, use just what has already been done uh, for English syntax in the verb net uh, but uh, we tried to extend uh, the existing alignments from frame net to word net which is available for Bulgarian as well and uh, starting from there uh, we tried to enhance the uh, conceptual description of WordNet synsets with bringing this information from FrameNet and from WordNet to, to the extent to which it is applicable. Uh, and this is, of course, uh, uh, used in um, applicable in many areas, such as uh, uh, syntactic and semantic parsing and semantic row labeling in particular, but uh, also uh, the very thing that got me into it was working on Bulgarian verbs and describing them syntactically and uh, coming up with the encountering the problem that uh, I didn't have enough examples with syntactic patterns in Bulgarian. I could search for some, but uh, how can, am I sure that I have uh, explored all of them? So I went to FrameNet and to VerbNet to look for different syntactic patterns and see, do they apply for Bulgarian and do they give me some ideas as to the Bulgarian syntax? So the two research questions, uh, we came up with two research questions. The first was how can we integrate semantic and syntactic information so as to enhance uh, the conceptual description in the already available resources and uh, to what extent is syntactic information language independent, of course it is not, but how can we transfer it to what extent can we use it uh, for less resource languages such as Bulgarian? Uh, the first question I can uh, answer more or less, the second uh, I can't for the time being. So mm, these are the three resources obviously that we uh, used and uh, in particular, what we want to do is um, use the vast lexical information that is available in uh, WordNet, the rich conceptual description that is available in FrameNet, and the syntactic patterns and generalized uh, semantic rows, uh, generalized as compared with the FrameNet frame elements uh, that. Uh, are described uh, that are used to describe uh, syntactic frames and semantic frames in WebNet. So uh, this is a very neat example, just not to uh, get into the <laughs> problems, uh, challenges that uh, uh, people encounter when uh, dealing with data from different resources. But uh, okay, so uh, we have uh, uh, a hypernym and a hypernym. So Stephen and his hypernym change. And uh, they're very um, already mapped to uh, the frame net uh, frames change, uh, post change, and um, cause change of consistency. And to these uh, to these frames, uh, there is one frame in uh, verb net, uh, which is other uh, change of state verbs. So uh, these are both ma mapped. These are hypernym and hypernym, and these are in fact uh, two frames that are in the in a inheritance relation that is pretty much uh, um, defined in the terms in which hypernym is inheritance. Uh, and uh, uh, the hypernym is uh, mapped to uh, the mother frame. And 
all this uh, corresponds to this verb net frame. So this is uh, just to illustrate how the mapping is done and also how uh, the difference in granularity across uh, the resources. The, mm, yeah. Um, and our task was uh, actually to approach general Alexis verbs uh, because uh, uh, they would be more represented in language and across resources, uh, or that's what we expect. Um, and uh, we used several approaches to several criteria to um, collect, to harvest uh, general Alexis verbs. Uh, first was uh, using the, those uh, scene sets in WordNet that have been already uh, assigned as uh, based, as have been labeled as base concepts. Uh, also, we used uh, verbs that uh, have high frequency in the Bulgarian national corpus, uh, and uh, also verbs that I identified in primary school textbooks, Bulgarian language primary textbooks. Uh, for obvious reasons, we expect that children uh, take up uh, uh, general Alexis first. Um, also, we used um, verb senses that uh, have been mapped to concepts in the Concepticon. This is a Max Planck uh, Institute's um, uh, initiative. Uh, they mapped actually uh, a lot of different uh, concepts lists, the concepts in different concepts lists. Uh, and it is uh, very useful. It mm, has also verbs. Uh, also, we used some verb senses that uh, have been marked as uh, uh, with an age of acquisition in primary school age. And uh, verbs that have been um, assigned frame net frames uh, with high frequency. So 50 plus verified occurrences assigned to our net scene sets. Okay, so this is how the, the uh, verbs from different resources uh, uh, look like. And um, as we see, the features are complementary for the purpose of acquiring uh, general vocabulary extraction. Um, okay, so we came up with uh, more than 2,500, 2, uh, 600, 700. Uh, verbs that have already been assigned both frame net frame and uh, verb net class. Uh, and these were uh, for these uh, uh, verbs, we also actually have 96 pairs of uh, frame net frame verb net class correspondences. Uh, but uh, we chose only those that uh, were assigned three or more since it's so single, uh, uh, if uh, uh, this uh, pair is assigned to one or two since that we discarded them. And uh, these are, uh, this is an example of uh, uh, the breathing frame and the breathe class in VerbNet and how they, uh, examples of uh, verbs that are uh, assigned uh, these frames in the WordNet and uh, their correspondence is frame net in, and verb net. Okay, so our idea was to start mapping frame net frame elements to verb net semantic roles uh, using information that is already there and uh, also uh, try to uh, do some syntactic, acquire some dis syntactic description. Um, this is just uh, an example of uh, the correspondence between the two frames and how they, their elements, actually the frame elements and the verb net roles are uh, defined. And what we see here is uh, actually clear cut correspondence between the agents, uh, the source, go, which corresponds to destination and air in this case is very, uh, lim uh, very, Particularly, very um, particularly described, but it actually it's actually the theme. Um, so there is a difference in the naming uh, in the naming um, inventory, 
first of all, and there is a difference in the granularity, of course. So the challenges to the mapping of uh, the two were, the first one was the difference in the conceptualization of seemingly corresponding frames and classes. Uh, if we consider while breeding and breed were quite well aligned, if we consider breathing and exhale, uh, the vocalate class exhale, we can see that in fact, uh, the breathing frame subsumes uh, exhale, the class of exhale verbs, but uh, it's not equated with it. So breathing is uh, breathe in and breathe out, both while the exhale class, uh, which is mapped to uh, breathing uh, automatically, in fact, uh, includes uh, verbs that mean uh, getting out something of your system. Okay, uh, what else? So different, uh, uh, not all core elements, those uh, frame elements that um, uh, have uh, are conceptually obligatory have uh, correspondence as semantic roles, first of all. Not all core elements, uh, mm, and uh, semantic roles have uh, the same saliency in the both frames. And this is another example of uh, this particular phenomenon. Uh, we all first see that uh, uh, comparing uh, one frame to a WorkNet uh, uh, class, we see that uh, there is a difference in the naming convention, of course, and also that uh, this is not uh, pink. So this means that uh, the goal is not uh, uh, a core frame element. It's not an obligatory conceptually, uh, conceptually obligatory. Uh, okay, so also in WorkNet, we also see uh, syntactically productive uh, patterns uh, yield semantic roles. So the semantic roles that are described are linked to productive semantic patterns. So in while in uh, the frame net frame that I'm discussing, um, there are only two core frame elements in, and only the initial location actually is the um, frame element that is uh, conceptually obligatory in uh, work net. We also see, the, we don't see what <laughs> it should have been there, uh, that also the goal and the path, so the trajectory and the goal of uh, uh, movement is, uh, uh, are also conceptually, uh, are also syntactically obligatory. They, I mean, they are related to syntactic patterns in WorkNet. Okay, and finally, the difference in the syntactic description across resources. Oh yes, so here it is. So uh, we have also obligatory trajectory and destination. Obligatory, I mean, there are syntactic patterns in WebNet associated with this frame that uh, uh, are uh, described there, while uh, in the, the frame net, uh, they are not uh, core frame elements. So the correspondence between the two was uh, done by abstracting uh, away from uh, the more particular roles to the more general ones. Uh, this is an example of the frame text creation and uh, it is uh, uh, the child of creating, which is the child of intentionally create, which is the, the child of transitive action. These four frames are in fact uh, related through an inheritance relation from the most uh, specific to the most general one. And these are the, actually the frame elements that correspond to uh, the subject and the, or the object, author and text, which if we abstract along the path uh, up, will give, give us agent and patient. So this is the, the one way we done this uh, alignment between. <clears throat> and so, uh, <clears throat> Uh, then when we approach the syntactic part, so aligning syntactic patterns, we use the several criteria, such as the correspondence in the number of frame net elements in frames in the frame net frames, and the 
semantic growth in uh, WorkNet. Also, we used uh, <coughs> the correspondence between the frame net frame and uh, sem semantic role that is mapped to it. Also, syntactic restrictions such as uh, the head of a PP, the closed types, the bordering elements, etc., and uh, the type of syntactic phrase and the syntactic position, subject or object in which they are expressed. So these are just all, uh, another couple of examples that illustrate how uh, we get uh, more uh, information from the different resources. Okay, you can skip that. Okay, so this is uh, how uh, it uh, looks like at the end. And uh, back to the question or the first one, we may uh, employ integration. We may try to, to approach uh, the integration of uh, such resources and employ syntactic patterns uh, by uh, which apply to all, but uh, not uh, almost all uh, synonyms in a given scene set. Uh, but we also need, as already uh, said, more specific semantic frames and more specific syntactic frames in order to fine tune through the languages from one language to another and to cater for the uh, needs of Bulgarian. Uh, and uh, to what extent is syntactic information? This is just a trivial answer that doesn't uh, say a lot, in fact. but. Uh, I hope that we will have some more access, uh, answers in the future. So thank you very much.